well, joining me now live from Charlotte, North Carolina, Mary C. Curtis. She's a columnist with the legislative newspaper Roll Call, based here in Washington. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So much to talk about. Um, you know, Justice Ginsburg, she spent 27 years in the highest court on the land with such an illustrious career. What, in your view, is her most lasting legacy? Well, she was basically a legal giant before she even went to the court because she had argued cases before the court on such issues as gender equality and others. So she was a legend almost before she got there, somewhat in the mold of Thurgood Marshall and race when he got to the court. But she became such a leading liberal voice, and she wrote so many opinions. She was only the second woman on the court. And I also think she transcended it to, as you said in the package before, to become a bit of an icon where she was so well known, called the notorious RBG. And she reveled in that. I think she was an incredible role model for women and for everyone, really. Uh, and such a tiny woman, but such a, a strong voice. And she was very well known, too, for getting along. She was good friends with uh, Justice Scalia, very different legal philosophies. But she showed that you could transcend that in your personal friendships. Mary, you know, the news broke just about an hour and a half ago, and even now the Supreme Court people are already gathering outside just to show you her popularity. Um, Justice Ginsburg's passing has profound consequences on the makeup of the Supreme Court. She was the leader of the four-member liberal wing. Um, and there we go. You can see the pictures of people out there live there in D.C. Now, if another Republican appointee goes through, the nine-person court would shift considerably to the right. Definitely. It already was five to four. And then, yes, you'd have that other, uh, that other conservative justice with many things like the legality of the Affordable Care Act and, of course, Roe v. Wade on abortion, which she was an abortion uh, rights adherent. And so that would definitely shift it. It shows Conservatives, Republicans generally pay much more attention to the makeup of the courts during the elections, and they run on it. And this shows how important that is. Well, I'm glad you bring this up, because already Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says that there will be a vote for a successor to replace Justice Ginsburg. Your thoughts on this? Well, this is such an about face, as everyone has pointed out. This is totally the opposite of what he said when Scalia died, actually much earlier uh, in an election year, and Barack Obama was president. And you will recall he said that it, you should wait until the election in an election year to let the, the elected president appoint the Supreme Court uh, justice. But of course, now that it's a Republican president, he is saying that it should be pushed through right away. And this is with the election being really close, uh, less than two months away. And so many people will point out the hypocrisy of it. And it's he's going to have to get the Republican majority to go along, because a little wrinkle is you have some senators running for election in close swing states, like in Colorado and in Maine. And this is a lot on them to have to stand up and say, we are going to change our positions from when we, uh, what, from what uh, McConnell said when Barack Obama was president. That said, it might drive conservatives to the polls. So it really is an issue that cuts both ways. But I don't think anybody doubted that McConnell was going to do this. You see Chuck Schumer, the Senate minority leader, the Democrat, saying, let's wait. And particularly since Ginsburg herself had written it saw her wish, basically, her dying wish, mm -hmm. that they wait until a new president comes in. But in a matter of polarized politics in America, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to see a big fight. You bring up Senator Schumer, indeed. What he tweeted was an exact, you know, copy and paste of what Senator McConnell said before. It might be a little bit inside baseball, U.S. politics, but does McConnell have enough support to push a vote through? He may. The, the Republicans have the majority of the Senate. So on sheer numbers, he does have it. That said, 
You've had people like uh, Mitt Romney, senator of uh, Utah, who has bristled at some of the breaking of the Senate traditions. And I think you already had uh, Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska say, perhaps we should wait as we did before. So you might hear the more independent voices actually be against McConnell in this. I think we will have to wait and see. Mm. Uh, for the first couple of days, it, it seems like it's not having a very long mourning period for this legal giant. People are really getting right into the po politics, which is a hint. It lets you know just how polarized it is. Absolutely. Uh, and if this happens, uh, President Trump would have now three justices, which is quite a lot, and it would very much shift the tenor of the court. And you've seen Chief Justice John Roberts try to be more of the institutionalist, but if he had another conservative voice on there, would that make him really want to be more of the institutionalist, or would it make him want to go more on the conservative side? Mm. Now, during the Obama administration itself, there were some liberals who urged Justice Ginsburg to step down seeing her advanced age, uh, so that President Barack Obama could name her successor. As we know, she rejected that advice. Um, it was her right, of course, because justices are appointed for life. But was that the right move, do you think? Well, I, mean, I do not want to step in and say what she should or should not have done. And also, you have to point out, if McConnell was still the head of the Senate, who's to say he would have let any of Barack Obama's nominees come out? Because remember, uh, Merrick Garland was named by uh, President Obama, and he wasn't even giving a, given a hearing in front of the uh, Senate. So McConnell really had an iron grip on it. And you know, uh, Mitch McConnell himself is up for re-election in the fall, mm -hmm. although right now polls show him doing very well. Um, I also want to bring out, we are seeing live pictures now of outside the Supreme Court as people mourn the passing of Justice Ginsburg, but also at the White House, the flag, the U.S. flag, is also now flying at half-staff. I mean, it is often said that one of the U.S. president's most enduring impact on the nation is who um, he names to the Supreme Court. And as we know, President Trump has already drawn quite a long list of possible successes we remember that lengthy, um, sometimes nasty confirmation hearing of Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Do you foresee something similar playing out? I definitely do. He has given a list of judges. Also, the Federalist Society, a very conservative group, they have really been supplying him with many lists of conservative justices. And he has really filled the courts. That's been one of his lasting legacies. There will be a fight, not just politically, but I do think the way you see people marching in the streets over issues of racial justice, you will see people speaking up this close to an election. Uh, but they are floating some names. Uh, I know one in particular, uh, Justice uh, Judge, not just Judge Amy Coney Barrett, who is on an appeals court, is someone that many conservatives, she's a conservative uh, Catholic, which she brought up her faith in her hearing, and many have been pushing her. So you will see, yes, uh, that this will be a way to really cement his legacy. And you can be sure that President Trump, who does not mind a fight, will be taking mm. this one up for sure. Mm. Now, you know, just to move away from politics and to come back to the life of Justice Ginsburg, why do you think she managed to rise to this, you know, rock star status, as you, as you say, films, books, documentaries, merchandising in her honor, uh, that rock star moniker, RBG? Why her? Why not someone else, say, like a Sandra Day O'Connor who preceded her? Well, I mean, Sandra Day O'Connor was a pioneer, mm -hmm. and she did leave a legacy. I think Ruth Bader Ginsburg, because she was on the cutting edge of so much of our society's uh, progression. She was a young woman, one of the first women in her law school class, uh, when they were, were very—they uh, were saying every woman took a man's place. 
And then you saw in society how she was not able to get a job on a law firm, and she had trouble becoming a law clerk. But then she took up the mantle of social justice. She worked for the ACLU. Uh, and so that progression really marked her career and marked the progression of America in so many ways. And you saw with her strong, I remember in particular her strong dissent uh, in defense of the Voting Rights Act when the Supreme Court in 2013 restricted some, invalidated some parts of it. And it was so strong and clear. And she had such a uh, focus on social justice that that made her become a hero. And she did not lose the fight uh, and that keen intellect, even as uh, sh she was becoming a veteran judge. I was listening to some of the coverage. And until she got sick just a couple of years ago, she never missed a day of going to the courts. Mm. And then later in life, she would fight back every time she had the cancer or illness. It just epitomized uh, a fight that young people could look up to and see this is what a life of passion for a cause looked like. And uh, I think that she really will be known for that. Uh, and because she was this soft-spoken woman, but you never doubted her intensity and her passion for justice. And, and many looked up to her. She was now the a dean of those justices, the liberal justices, and she wrote many, many uh, very incredible uh, he, uh, decisions, both when they were in the majority and then as dissents. So she did leave quite a legacy. And I did not know her, but from folks I know who did, they said that she was also a very loyal friend and a really good person. Uh, she and her husband, the late uh, attorney, uh, Martin, were, were known for that in Washington.